Hi there, let's create this sword model together. So in this beginner's friendly tutorial by watching this video from beginning to the end, you will be able to model this simple sword model. All you have to do is to follow step by step and understand the techniques and tricks that I use for modeling this sword. Let's get started. First, you need to keep this in mind that, for good and professional modeling, always you need reference images that are very helpful in modeling a perfect model, and not just reference image. The reference image needs to be good enough to give you insight of what you are modeling. All you have to do is to Google search for whatever you like for references. But in this tutorial I need to keep things as simple as possible for easy understanding the process and overall workflow so I will use a 2D image as a reference for my model and download it as image. First, I imported image as a background but unluckily my screen recorder does not show the way I navigate to my image. But don't worry, all you need to do is to import image as a background, then you will have to navigate to the location of where your reference image is saved. Always ensure that you face x-axis on your viewport to make the imported image face right in front of you directly. This will make the image perfectly align on your viewport. You can reduce the opacity of the image to easily see the objects on your viewport. Always you can see the shortcuts I use on the left bottom corner of this video. You can hold shift plus right click your mouse to move the 3D cursor to the position you like to define the location where you want new added objects on your viewport to spawn. So at first I added the plane to create the base mesh of the sword I choose among these options here in my reference image, but for me I decided to choose this one. So position the plane as follows. The game is simple here, it's the matter of scaling extruding and adding loop cuts to cut the faces you need. So just follow what I'm doing here carefully. Hope you'll see the drill, it's the matter of pressing S for scaling. B for extruding and present control plus R for adding loop cuts to cut the faces you need. You can add loop cuts by clicking control plus R key then you can scroll the middle mouse button to add segments. Hope you get the ways I use to extrude, scale continuously, so all you have to do is to trace the mesh depending on the reference image and you are good to go. So now we are going to give depth to this knife by extruding it and add a subdivision surface modifier so as we can have a much more control of the shape of the knife. 
so just follow along on what I'm doing here carefully without skyping any part for better understanding of the concepts and tricks I use. Also always pay attention to the shortcuts I use to model this sword because shortcuts are really game kanger for fast modeling in Blender. After we extrude the sword and giving it some depth by pressing E, now it's time to refine the sword and giving it a real shape and add in some fine details to it to make it look as realistic as possible. So in short this is the most important part of modeling so all you need is to be very careful and watch the process till the end to see how I do this. I added subdivision surface modifier to have more control of the shape of this sword, so just follow and watch how we use it to model. As you can see as soon as I added this modifier, my sword shape changes to roundness like shape on its edges, so don't worry I'll show you how to control this roundness using crease values. But first before all let's define our sword shape through me and crease values. You can see in this item tab, there is mean crease value and vertex crease value. These values are super important in subdivision surface modeling so you really need to pay attention here on how these values works and how they affect our sword when we adjust it. I usually press Alt key plus C key to enter X-ray mode to select through the object. See how this crease value affects our object when I adjust it. So what you need to do is to tweak it according to your needs to where you see the shape of your sword looks perfect. You need to put this in your mind that the principle of subdivision modeling is easy. All you have to do is to select the fave, add your vertex and adjust its crease value and see the magic happen. See the magic I told you about. I hope we are clear now so, all we have to do is to play around with these creases values until you finish the model.
Let's add loop cut here by pressing Ctrl plus our key. Also you need to know that these loop cuts gives us more control to our model. But you need to be very careful with this because many loops sometimes may confuse you and ruin your mesh if you deal with them incorrectly. Pay attention with the shortcuts please if you get confused how I did something. Now I'm going to add cutting edges to our knife. I wanted to make this tutorial short as possible so I will fast forward the process a little bit but if you feel uncomfortable with the speed you can reduce it in playback speed. What I'm doing here is to adjust the vertex position so I can get a nice shape of the sword. As you see I didn't use any add-on like edge flow in this tutorial so as I can keep it simple to understand the basics first before diving into the add-ons used which are way much more simple to use and they enhance the modeling process very good. So in the next tutorials I will dive into them too. But you can watch another video I released about army knife modeling. There you could get much more techniques to model as the knife I modeled there is some how complicated than this one. Those red lines you see are called seam so you can mark seam edges so you can easily select the area marked as seam by just pressing L instead of manually selecting everything. And these selected faces I select them so I can put the materials for itself for the cutting part of the sword. Our model is nearly over so all I had to do at this point is to refine the shape of the handle by adjusting the crease values of different faces in item tab. All I have to do is to make background color black and then I use 3 point lighting system. It's in built in blender add and it is called tried lighting so. You can easily set up lights as follows. Selicit the light source then right click on the viewport to adjust the light strength. After that you can add some reflections and colors simply and you can get something like this. I hope you enjoyed the video and you find it useful. So, leave a like. Comment, share it to others and subscribe to this channel to get notifications and updated for the other videos and tutorials I release every day. Eat, render, repeat. Creativity knows no bounds. Have a good day.